Hello and welcome to Billy Ho Sports. We are continuing our coverage on Oakland Park's big race day coming up this weekend, February 24th. Saturday, we're featuring the Grade 2 Rebel Stakes. For the three-year-olds on the Kentucky Derby Trail, I've already released the preview, full comprehensive preview featuring race replays, analysis, past performances, a few selections, and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So give that a look. Really pretty good video, in my opinion. Uh, this is going to be a preview of the Grade 3 Razorback for four-year-olds and up. It's a handicap uh, preceding race number 10 per 600K. A uh, field of 13 going, mile and the 16th on the dirt. Uh, let's see. Rebels preview show is out. I've already covered that. Past performances, all that good stuff. So actually just remember to subscribe to the channel. Much appreciated. Check out the playlists. I've got the Derby Trail. I've got history of the Kentucky Derby. All kinds of good stuff. If you're into golf, I've got plenty of PGA coverage for golf. If you play daily fantasy sports, that's uh, always a good thing to watch. Set those notification bells for me. Uh, helps you too. That way you don't miss out on anything. And uh, weather outlook is good. Should be a fast track. So let's take a look at the field of 13. Number one is Seize the Night, trained by Eddie Milligan. We'll have the leading jock Christian, uh, Christian Torres riding. Six and one morning line, son of Carpe Diem. A uh, couple of minor stakes races at Oakland over the past couple of months. Finished second and fifth uh, most recently. Pretty good efforts coming off the pace on a sloppy seal track here. Sees the night split between horses for the late bid, but was out kicked by the wire to wire winner, Promise Keeper, who's in this race. We'll talk about him next. Uh, Mayfair better on a draft track, but uh, uh, a really not so good trend for uh, Milligan as he's 0 for 12 in route, route races this meet. So that's not too good. But number 10 is Promise Keeper, was the one that went wire to wire. Maybe found his groove under the new trainer, Robert Diodoro, Harry Hernandez rides. Uh, you saw the wire to wire win. It's possible that he returns to that. Uh, if he can get back to that triple bris, uh, ugh, excuse me, the triple digit brisnet form, he could be a player at a, at a price. So that's number 10. Like I said, previous videos. I uh, I lump them together as the competitors in the same races to keep it more organized. So we'll go to number two, Frosted Departure, trained by Kenny McPeak, Ramon Vasquez up. Uh, fourth place finish, January 12th, going a mile and three sixteenths. Faltered on the muddy track. Uh, had, had previously won at 50K uh, with a huge win, earning a 102 speed rating. Uh, but really hasn't in his past. We'll look at the past performances in a little bit, so be sure to stick around. But number two in, ranked in the prime power makes no sense to me. It just had that one big uh, race. Uh, the rest of them doesn't really show any propensity that he would be able to run that way again, so I'm not really sure where I stand there just yet. Number three, speed bias coming off a decent effort, uh, 141K allowance at Oakland January 13th. Setting the pace throughout. Take he took the lead into the mid stretch, but did, did weaken. It was going a mile and an eighth. So I'm hoping this cutback uh will help fast track incoming. So maybe looking to set that pace and go all the way. Uh he has multiple triple digit brisnet figures. Uh jockey Rafael Bejarano beginning to heat up a little bit. He's got three wins out of, out of his last eight mounts. Trainer Ron Marquette is 20% coming off being the beaten favorite. So the horse that beat him was Magic Tap. He's the number eight, strong and determined, uh, splitting foes down the stretch to get this win in, the in that same 141K allowance. Uh, going way back to uh, September, he chased Saudi Crown and others in the Pennsylvania Derby grade one event to a fourth place finish. So he's got some class. 
trainer Steve Asmussen and Tyler Gaffleone hook up again, a definite win contender. Uh, then you got OP Firecracker, who's in that same race, ran third. The OP Firecracker will come out of the nine post, uh, trained by Robert Medea and uh, jockey Isaac Castillo aboard. So he had a late rally closing on the far outside, but might just lack the speed to keep up with this group if if there's an uh, if there's a fast track, fast pace. Uh, so we are going to jump over to number four, Ain't Life Grand, seven to two for trainer Kelly Von Himmel. Martin Garcia is uh, riding, earned a big 104 Brisnet number in this grade three Cornhusker stakes way back in July. I'm not going to show that replay. It's so long ago, but he, it was a pretty good run coming off seven months break. His uh, off the pace stalking style might come in handy if the pace is a little heated. Uh, but the question is, is it going to be ready to fire? I'll show you the past performances because looking back in the October and March uh, break that he took, 2022 to 2023, off from October, then raced again in March, uh, lost by 13 and a 62K optional claimer at Oakland Park. So uh, he might need one because he came back right after that one and won. So a lot of times these horses off these long layoffs need a race under their belt to get their sea legs again and get used to just the competitive spirit, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, number five is Octane, trained by Juan Alvarado. Julian Leperu aboard. Uh, this one showed some good early speed at Gulfstream Park on January 20th in the Sunshine Classic. Uh, he was in command most of the way until he was challenged by luring him in at the top of the stretch. Then he battled back to the lead and uh, battled all the way down the stretch with lure him in uh, and just lost the head bob late. So uh, Octane looks like a pretty good one to be coming uh, up in this race as well. Midnight Rising is number six, trained by Jordan Blair, Martin Chu on a board. Uh, nice victory at Oakland on January 6th, going a mile in the slop. Uh, he's mostly run on turf and all weather tracks, but doesn't appear to be much of a contender here. Uh, number seven, U.S. Army, trained by Sean Davis and Luis Quinones. Uh, hasn't seen a fast track since last October. He does seem to have some speed, showing a wire-to-wire -wire win back in uh, December at Remington, but maybe just a cut below the uh, top contenders. And now we jump up to number 11, Notary, trained by Armando Hernandez, Manny Vasquez aboard. Uh, nice win going a mile and a 16th at Oakland on January 26th. Muddy track. Uh, it does have some decent speed, but a bit outclassed in this one. Outside post, no favors there either. Same for number 12, Escapologist. Uh, for Kenny McPeak, Manny Esquivel rides. Uh, the Contreras Stables claimed the son of Ransom Moon on December 22nd. Uh, it would take a pretty monster effort uh, to win this one. Uh, lacks the speed and class, I think. Outside post, obviously no bueno. Same for 13 Bolsey, but was a nice allowance win for 140K, trained by Donnie Von Himmel and Francisco Arieta in the saddle. He has some early speed and might get out on that first flight breaking from the outside post, but I think a little bit of too much jump in class, a little bit too much outside post. So I'm going to probably pass on that one. So that's going to do it for the preview. And now we're going to take a look at some past performances. Okay, so what I'm looking for is uh, tactical speed. Uh, closers do have some success. I went back and looked at the past couple of years. This last year was the 2023 Last Samurai was able to run down the leaders, which one of them was West Will Power. Uh, in the stretch, and that was a really fast pace. They went 111 for the three quarters. So um, could be interesting looking for an off-the-pace horse. Uh, but uh, handicapped, but there's no real weight advantage. Uh, OP Firecracker is carrying the least weight at 114, and the most weight is 118. That's really not significant enough for me to care about. The outside post is obviously a disadvantage. And I'm not really high on any of those outside three anyway. Uh, the top two that I am looking at 
are probably going to be speed bias and magic tap. Uh, so it could be a two horse race like we uh, saw back two years ago in 2022. You had Plainsman and Thomas Shelby uh, who were one, two battling it back and forth. The entire race hit the stretch, held everybody off. It was a slightly just a tick slower at 112 for the three quarters. So uh, we'll see. That's the way I'm going to play it is a, a probably a nice fair pace, but not too fast. So, Seize the Night, I think, is going to be up there for me. I, I like him as kind of a sleeper, one that could come off the pace with Kristen Torres abo bo ugh, ab aboard the horse. Uh, you can see in the fifth season, uh, he ran pretty tough. 92 speed needs a little bit more than that because that was a little bit weaker race. This one is the one that I don't quite comprehend as much. 15 to 1 morning line is Frosted Departure for Kenny McPeak. Has, is second in the prime power. And I, I look, I get it. He ran a 102 in this huge wire-to-wire -wire effort at Oakland Park in December. But every other race, I mean, his best speed, I mean, he does have a 94 way back here at Churchill Downs. But, I mean, it's a bunch of 85s, a 79, a 72. So I, I'm not really sure what to think about that. Uh, but speed bias is the one I was looking at the most. You can see the several, the 108 way back here where he lost by just a neck at a mile and three sixteenths. This is a mile and sixteenth. He's cutting back. See, he's, he's gone a mile and a sixteenth right, uh, right here, but did not fare very well at, uh, where was that at? Churchill Downs. But I think this could be a good race for him to bounce back off of this effort. Third off the layoff. I think that's going to be improvement. 20% beaten favorite. Eight Life Grand, you can see the Cornhusker is the last race way back in July. This is what I referred to earlier is this break right here from October. Uh, and then the, the first race back was in March. Seventh by 13, just no rally. So might need one. Octane, this is the second by a head. That was the Sunshine. Just uh, really, really close. Just missed. And then uh, Midnight Rising, I don't have any interest in, neither Army. Here's Magic Tap. See, some mid, uh, some low 93s. Uh, Going to be tough. Not really sure what to think about the, the speed here. But uh, if it's just a nice pace. And also shortening in distance too so we'll see what happens for steve asmussen but i trust that that combination of asmussen and gaff leon uh, looks good to me op firecracker was third in that race but i'm just really not 100 sure on the speed so uh promise keeper does look sort of interesting because he did get that win overseas the night and uh, that was a quick pace you can see the uh plus 12 plus 14 that that's a uh, pretty swift uh claimed by robert uh diodoro might have some interest so anyway i wanted to close out the show here just to show you a few selections so basically what i'm gonna say is magic tap and uh speed bias one two and I'm looking at Seize the Night underneath, Octane underneath, possibly Eight Life Grand. Uh, maybe can, can come late cleaning things up. I don't know that it's going to be as tough a field to uh, to get after, so he may not need his A game to get it done here. So anyway, that's how I see it. I hope you have the best of luck this weekend. Be on the lookout for more content, including that history of the Kentucky Derby. Uh, the next couple episodes uh, hopefully will be coming out this weekend. I think I'm going to have a race, uh, the Honeybee, I have not covered yet for Rebel Stakes Day. That's coming soon as well. Until then, see you soon.